In this tutorial, we'll do a quick review of cosine and sine laws. Cosine law and sine laws work for any type of triangle. They work for acute triangles, that is, all angles are less than 90 degrees in the triangle. They all add up to 180 degrees and each of them are less than 90. They also work for obtuse triangles, that is, one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees. They even work for right triangles, that is, one of the angles equals 90 degrees, though you typically just use the standard trig ratios, which are simplified versions. Cosine law is typically written as c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Note that the lowercase letters a, b, and c represent the lengths of the triangle side, while the uppercase c in this formula represents the angle across from the corresponding side C. So this equation uses mostly side lengths represented by the lowercase letters A, B, and C, and one angle, that is angle C. Our condition here is that side C must be opposite from angle C. It should look pretty familiar in that it's just Pythagorean theorem, that is C squared equals A squared plus B squared, with a little extra at the end. In a right triangle, angle C is 90 degrees. So this part just disappears and voila, your familiar Pythagorean theorem. Some people remember cosine law as it's just Pythagorean theorem with a second ABC. Two for the second, A side B and cos of C. So a second ABC. The formula for sine law can be written as either a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c, or flipped over, sine a over a equals sine b over b equals sine c over c. We'd only use two of the ratios in either one of them. Again, the side lengths are the lowercase letters a, b, and c, while the angles are the corresponding uppercase letters across from the sides. So, we have two versions of the sine law. So which one do you use? Well, since we typically like our unknown on the top, to save a step when we solve, you can use this to easily choose the best version of the sine law to use for a given problem. If you're using it to solve for a side, use this version, where the sides are on top leaving your unknown on the top and easier to solve for. If you're using the sine law to solve for an angle, use this version, where the angles are on top, leaving you with your unknown on top and making it easier to solve for. Let's consider an example. We have two vectors added, tail to head like this. The resultant vector goes from the start of the first vector to the end of the second vector, like this. And in this case, we want to solve for the length of the resultant vector. Let's call that x. And the angle here, let's call that theta. We can see that this isn't a right triangle, so we can't use the standard trig ratios here. Thus, let's consider our cosine and sine laws. Let's solve for the length first. We're looking for a side where we know the angle opposite to this side, 37 degrees. And we also know the lengths of the other two sides, 11 meters and 8 meters. This aligns perfectly with the use of the cosine law. To align our sides with the cosine law, well, x is our c, and a and b are 8 and 11. It doesn't matter which is which. What does matter is that the angle c is across from the side c, or x in our case, 37 degrees. We can work this out to be x squared equals 44.4. And square rooting both sides, we get x equals 6.7 meters. Now, to get that angle theta, we can use sine law. Since we're solving for an angle, let's put the angles on top. Even though sine law is typically written with three ratios being equal to each other, again, you only choose two of them for solving. It doesn't matter which two you choose as long as you match the lowercase side length with its corresponding uppercase angle across from it. In our case, we can write sine theta over 
the side across from theta is 8, equals sine 37, and the side across from the 37 we determined is 6.7, and we get sine theta equals 0 0.7186, and if we inverse sine both sides to get the theta by itself, we end up with a theta of 46 degrees. In this tutorial, we did a quick review of cosine and sine laws. We noted that cosine laws and sine laws work for any types of triangles, acute, obtuse, or even right triangles, though you'd commonly use standard trig ratios for right triangles. Cosine law is typically written like this, and should look pretty familiar, as it's simply Pythagorean theorem with a second ABC added on. The sine law can be written as either of these, and we typically choose any two ratios within these and like to choose the version where our unknown is on the top, just to make life easier when we solve. While using either of these, we need to remember that the side lengths are the lowercase letters, a, b, and c, while the corresponding angles directly across from each side are the uppercase letters, capital A, B, and C.